I'm going to mute.
two, one, go. Hey everybody, Kent Martz here from Explore Scientific. Welcome to today's episode of First Light Chronicles. It's Wednesday, although it feels like Tuesday. It's Wednesday here because we had a holiday on Monday in the United States. Today we're talking about getting started in astronomy and how do you do it. Uh, there's a couple of ways. Easiest way is to just look up and start learning the constellations wherever you live. But after a little while, you want to progress into, we'll say, a pair of binoculars or something like that. But that then leads you into a telescope. And I'm sitting here looking at myself on the monitor. You're going to notice I have earbuds in. We're using a new system. And now I can hear myself in my ears. Boy, that's exciting. <laughs> How about a minute? Yes. 10 seconds late. It's joyous. Oh, Paul got it fixed. Paul's working from home. Whew. Nope, it's still there. This is going to be fun. All right, so we're going to talk about a telescope. Uh, it disappeared. Thank you, Paul. Nope, it's even longer delayed. So anyway, I'm going to take these out. One out, maybe that'll help. There we go. It stopped. All right, so I'm going to put one back in. And I dropped it, of course. Paul's at home furiously banging on his keys trying to make it quit, and I think he did. Right, it's That's working. a good thing. You can hear right, me so now. This is I'm, I'm a series of telescopes. We're going to show you a series of telescopes today uh, from Explore Scientific. There are first light series of telescopes. Uh, they're designed for beginners and early amateurs to get started in astronomy. An affordable telescope, yet really sturdy, strong, uh, powerful telescopes that won't break the bank, right? The difference sometimes between a toy telescope and an educational telescope and a full-blown telescope sometimes is not a lot of money and sometimes it's less expensive. So it looks like I have Paul, I think we froze, and at least we have on my monitor. Not sure what's going on there. So maybe Annie will see this at her desk and come back in. So welcome to Amazon Live and the Social Media Blast. If you're out there, give us a shout out on the uh, Amazon uh, platform. You can use the chat function and give us a shout out. Ask questions, anything astronomy related, whatever. I uh, love to get feedback and talk to people out there uh, who uh, have questions. So we're going to look at the this telescope. It is a 102 millimeter telescope. This is not a small telescope by any stretch of the imagination. Hey Noah, can you come see if you can get the monitor unfroze uh, so I can see any chats that come up? Thank you, sir. Uh, this has a 102 millimeter aperture, which means the piece of glass that's right in here is 102 millimeters in diameter. The uh, Dew shield protects that piece of glass that's way down in here. It has a focal length of 640 millimeters, so 640 millimeters until it comes to focus. This is a good sized telescope, good for lunar planetary uh, deep sky objects. It's a nice compromise, right? Comes with a focus. It also comes with a two inch eyepiece, just like this one right here excuse me, a two inch, a one and a quarter inch eyepiece. It's a 25 millimeter super plossal. Also comes with this device right here known as a diagonal. It has a mirror in it. So instead of having to get down here and look through the telescope like that, you put the diagonal in, put the eyepiece in. And now it's a very simple matter to just look down in the telescope just like this to see what you're looking at. Much easier to use, especially when you start pointing stuff high in the sky. This would be extremely hard to use in this configuration if you just had to look straight through it, like, you know, a spyglass or, you know, a long tube. This is fine, but when you get up here, it's really difficult, especially when it's mounted on a tripod or you're trying to handhold it. So it comes with everything you need to get started, including right here, and you can barely see it, I'll take it off, including a red dot finder. This red dot finder is what makes this telescope pointable because if you start out trying to just point the telescope with no sight, no way to do it, 
uh, it's it's impossible to point the telescope at anything up in the sky. Uh, it's you might find something, but finding your target is is really difficult. However, with a red dot finder, the red dot finder is a tool that makes that job of finding stuff up in the sky a whole lot easier. Here's how it works. It's the same for every telescope, uh, no matter what kind of telescope it is. A red dot finder, or um, even if it's a little telescope with a a more powerful field of view than this zero power, it all works the same way. You do this same process. You find something that's a long ways off. Miles are better than yards. The directions we supply say like 300 yards. So you want to be at least that far off, that'll be fine. Uh, so you can then um, um, point the telescope at something, find it as however far it is you can see away, top of a radio tower, a steeple of a church, a stoplight that's blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks down, whatever. Miles are better than yards. Yards are better than feet. So you're going to move the telescope and find that object and center it up in your eyepiece. Now you want to do this in the evening or early morning before the sun gets real bright because when that red dot comes on, it's not super bright and the sunshine is going to make it disappear. Impossible to see. This is designed to be used at night. So you turn it on in the evening, sun's going down, you point it at the top of, let's say, a radio tower, okay? So you point it at that radio tower, and what do you do? You make sure the telescope's pointed at the radio tower, dead center, the very top of it, or whatever, some obvious thing you can see. Turn your red dot on, and you can use the controls. There's a little knob here and a little knob on the other side. You turn them, and you can move that red dot left and right and up and down, and you move the red dot until it's on top of whatever your target is. Let's say it's the top of, a, of the radio tower. Yep, I see that, just came through, the monitor just got back up. Uh, Synthil, hello Synthil, uh, nice to see you. Uh, Synthil says, hi Kent, we appreciate that, shout out very much Synthil. So, you put your red dot on it, and you move it to the red dot so it's on top of the radio tower. And now look in here again, and chances are you move the telescope a little bit, no big deal. You simply move the telescope back to what you were looking at, the top of the radio tower, centered in the eyepiece. Make your adjustments again, and when the two match, now you're ready to start looking at something. So say tonight, you're going to want to go out and look at the moon. It's uh, what, uh, uh, two-thirds of the way to full, something like that. It's like seven, eight, nine days old moon. 14-day uh, old moon is generally the full moon. And so you're going to... Go out tonight and turn on the red dot, and you're going to look through the, tele the red dot and move the telescope until the red dot is on top of your target. In this case, it's the moon. And then you're going to look in the telescope eyepiece and focus the eyepiece on the moon. If you've done a really good job, what you've done is you've... I'm hearing myself again, Paul. If you've done a really good job... Ah, okay, that would probably do it. It was about six seconds after I said it, which makes it very difficult. I'm not a professional at this and can't focus. I, I've, I know, it's hard. I, it's, that's a whole new skill to learn. Got to start Sir. learning to ignore this stuff, I, Ken. Oh, oh, great. Paul, are you going out live now too, Paul? Yeah. Uh, okay, Paul's going out live too. Didn't know if I need to relay what he said because he's saying in my head. Is there a on or something? And he's uh, saying it to y'all too. So anyway, so you got the telescope. Yeah. If you've done See, a really good job, I'm sitting in the remote control room, doing this from yeah. a laptop with my phone. With this phone, it's technology at its finest. What can I say? So yeah, yeah, yeah. you're going to move the telescope. You're going to put the red dot on top of the target centered on the moon. Look in the eyepiece. Now, if you've done a really good job. The moon's going to be centered up, but it may not be perfectly centered up. But now that you've found it in the eyepiece, here's what you do. You move the telescope left, right, up, and down until you get it centered. And now go back and readjust, make some fine adjustments on that red dot, and get them lined up so they're looking at exactly the same spot. And now when you want to go look at, uh, we'll say, uh, Saturn, you've checked out the moon, you want to look at Saturn close to the moon, you're going to just simply put the red dot on top of Saturn, focus the telescope, Saturn should be in the field of view. It's smaller than the moon, 
So now you can fine tune that red dot even more. And then go look at Jupiter over in the southeastern sky rising after dark. And you can start looking at the planets and get a tour of the planets with your brand new first light uh, 102 millimeter telescope. We haven't talked about the mount it's on yet. So the mount is called a twilight nano mount, okay? It is simple left, right, as you can see right here. Up, down, it is in the carousel. Uh, right now, if you go is over the, the carousel. the right one? Look, I, I had the wrong one a minute ago. Uh, yes, that's it. Right there. Okay. So you can move it left, right, and up and down. Very simply, very smoothly. Nice, easy to use right there. So this is the AR-102-600 Twilight Nano. Now I'm going to switch. Oh, the sound has come back in my head. So, six seconds. Whew. Gonna switch telescopes real quick to a different telescope and the same mount. Here we go. I think Paul's doing it just to mess with me. Paul's not denying it. He may be deep in thought, though. Okay, so this is a first light. No, I'm still in it. Still hearing it. Should be gone now. Okay. Can. Shouldn't do you any echo. Nope, I can still hear it. Where is it coming yeah. from? It's gone now. It's gone now. Okay. I don't know. I don't... I changed my microphone. I noticed that I was, it was scraping, and I was like, no, that's not good. It's, I changed it to my, uh, my big mic. It was it's on still the wrong doing mic. It. What's it? You can't it's, do it. Uh, still doing it. I'm here about eight seconds late. All right, so this is a first light 127-millimeter telescope. Now, this is a different telescope than we're looking at. That telescope we were looking at before is just a long tube. It's just a long tube that you look through with an eyepiece, right? You might have a diagonal, but it's still just a long tube. This telescope is different. As you can see, it's a whole lot shorter than the other one. But this telescope has a little secret. And I'll tell you what that secret is. Up here in the front, remember that first one we looked at had a dew shield, and the glass was down in there six or eight inches? This has a piece of glass right there in the very front of the telescope. That starts bending the light, right? Back here in the back of this telescope, there's a curved mirror right here. That curved mirror really starts bending the light and making it come to a point. Well, it comes up this way, so the light comes in, starts getting bent, hits the mirror, starts getting smaller and coming to a point, and then... Right inside this telescope, right there where you see that dot, right there, you can see that dot. That dot has a mirror on the back side of it. That mirror reflects the light back this way, and it comes out of the back of the telescope because that mirror has a hole in it. It comes out of the telescope, goes through a diagonal, comes out the eyepiece, and goes into your eye. Okay, so at that point, then, you can focus the telescope. And the monitor is frozen again, Annie. So at that point, you can focus the telescope, and everything is good. So you focus the telescope right here with this knob right here. It moves that mirror forwards and backwards, bringing the image into focus in your eyepiece. This telescope is bigger around, right? Because it's bigger around, it brings in more light into your eyepiece. It also has a much longer focal length. The telescope we just looked at had a focal length of 600 millimeters. This telescope has a focal length, meaning how long it is before it comes to focus, has a focal length of 1,900 millimeters. That's three times longer than the telescope we just looked at, although the tube is much shorter. That shorter tube makes this telescope uh, easier to manhandle or handle, easier to transport, easier to store. That's what's nice about it. Now, a downside to that longer focal length is the images can appear darker. That's why a bigger aperture balances that out a little bit, okay? Uh, so, 
And while we're talking, if you're on Amazon or uh, the social media blast right now, feel free to give us a shout out. We love having conversations with the people who are watching. And if you uh, are a first timer here and haven't uh, seen our uh, technology uh, with uh, telescopes, binoculars, uh, educational toys, uh, give us a follow so you get notified of what's going on and you can keep seeing our broadcast. So, Paul, can you, can, let me see if I can hear you. There we go. Okay. I can hear you, Paul. Uh, that's good. So, back to the telescope. Uh, over in the carousel right now, you can uh, find a product called a sun catcher. That is a solar filter that you can put on any telescope, and it goes on this end of the telescope right here, so you can use your telescope to look safely at the sun. There it is right now. You can see it over in the carousel as the featured item. Uh, Paul, can you run a video from uh, remotely of the sun catcher? Well, we'll talk about it for a minute while he figures out if he can make this happen Well, I don't think... Remotely. I it's not something that I can do because I yeah. wasn't prepared to That's show okay. it. No big deal. If I was prepared to show it, I could. Yeah, so that's I the way I didn't know goes. you were going to want it. Yep. Uh, I've got all the says, others. How do you can't great show as always? So the Sun Catcher is a, a um, Mylar film. It's a mirror-based that rejects almost all the light and safely lets the light through into your eye. Now, you need to understand how it works. It always goes in the front of the telescope. Never back here because focused sunlight coming out of a telescope is like a laser and it instantly will burn through that reflective film. So it goes on the front of the telescope. We sell them in a variety of sizes, one that will fit the telescope you have right now if you have a telescope. You can go to the carousel, select your size. If you don't know what size you need and can't figure it out, real simple, go on uh, to the Explore Scientific store on Amazon dot com and click contact seller and Noah over there will get your message that hey I want to buy a sun catcher here's the kind of telescope I have and he'll figure out what you need and let you know and you can buy it then right here through the Amazon site um, and ship straight to you and you'll then be able to look at safely at the sun now what is there to see on the sun through this kind of filter, it's a white light filter, so you can see sunspots, you can see some granulation, some fractal things like that. There's a couple on like my that. desk. If you want to go over there and get the little ones. Hey, Annie, there's a solar filter on his desk. He said, you want to go over and grab one? Yep. Okay. And he's going to grab it. So you can oh. see sunspots and granulation on the surface of the sun. You won't see those long, beautiful arches and prominence that you see through other filters. Those are much more expensive. These solar filters are inexpensive and work fantastic. Uh, here's one right here. Um, it is a sun catcher 4 to 7, and it probably will fit. Look at that. Fits just like that on the telescope. And now you've transformed your telescope that's good for looking at the stars. You have now transformed that into a solar safe telescope. Okay? So with this right here, you can look at the sun. Now, how do you point it? Don't use the bread dot finder. I take my finders off when I do this or put a cup or something over them so people don't try and look through it. Now, you can use it if you just use the shadow method, right? You just move it until you get a good, crisp, solid shadow. And I'll hold a piece of paper right here so I can see the shadow of the finder scope. But as soon as I get it found and see it in the eyepiece, take the finder scope off, right? Here's how this works. It's going to come, put together, except that it's going to have four pieces of this hard foam right here. This hard foam is what you install. You get four pieces of double-sided tape, and you put the four pieces of foam in place, and then I put it on the table, take the telescope, set it down centered, push down in, and I'll mark it with a pen or just go ahead and cut it with a knife. You want these foam pieces a little bit too big. You don't want this to just slide easily on your telescope because it's easy for it to bump or knock off. You want to have to push this thing and really get it pushed down on there so it doesn't just 
come off easily because you don't want to be looking at the telescope and the wind come blow it off or somebody pull it off really easy. You want that to stay on there. Uh, we have all sorts of sizes, again, that will fit any telescope. If you can't figure it out, contact Noah. You just go to the Explore Scientific store on Amazon.com, uh, contact seller, and Noah will figure it out for you. So this is the first light 127 millimeter Maxitov Cassegrain. That Maxitov Cassegrain talks about the kind of piece of glass here and how the system is put together. This is a Maxitov Cassegrain. You may have heard of a Schmidt Cassegrain, a Ritchie Creighton. There's all sorts of different uh, configurations. They all work real similar. Piece of glass, curved mirror, flat mirror, comes out the back, goes to your eye. Now you might notice on this eyepiece there's something attached to it. All the first light telescopes come with that right there. What is that? Absolutely you're right. It's a smartphone adapter. It's really easy to use. Here's how you do it. Fits a one and a quarter inch eyepiece, which these are 100, 100, 1.25 inches right here. The other size of eyepieces typical in telescopes are two inch, so they're two inches across, much larger than this one. And this is how this works. It's real simple. You simply slide the eyepiece in and get it all the way down to where the little rubber eye cup is down in there. And you tighten down the set screw just like that. Now, and I get it good and tight. I don't try and baby it. I get it on there. And now you can take your smartphone. And with my smartphone, I have to take it out of the carry case, but that's okay. I wet these little octopus suction cups down uh, with a damp rag. And then I turn my camera on and just put it down until my camera lines up with the circle of the eyepiece. And I stick it on there real good. It also comes with a... Uh, piece of uh, stretchy uh, elastic material, put it on there to help hold your uh, smartphone on this adapter. Once it's there, you can simply put it in the telescope and make final adjustments on focus and off you go. Now, my advice is to get it on something with a, with a low power eyepiece, pull it out, put the eyepiece on, smartphone on, put it back in because what you're looking at is moving, right? So if it's moving across the sky and you know that you keep having to move the telescope this way to follow it, just move the telescope until it's barely in the field of view. And as it moves across the sky, that gives you time to get your smartphone adapter attached and hooked up so it's ready to go. You start taking pictures and then share them uh, wherever you want to with all your friends and neighbors to show them images of what you've been looking at through your first light telescope. All right. Tim Burris says hi. Say again. Tim Burris says hi. Tim Burris says hi. Hello, Tim. Thank you for that shout out. Now, I'm going to switch telescopes here real quick, and it's a different kind of telescope. So I'm covering the three different kinds of telescopes effectively that are out there. So we've looked at a standard refractor that's just the typical long tube of the telescope, glass in one end and eyepiece in another. Then we looked at a Schmidt Cassegrain, or in this case a Maxitov Cassegrain, that is a folded light path. And now we end up with, sort of looks similar to that 127 we just looked at, right? It's a, about the same length, about the same size, but it's a different kind of telescope. This is called a Newtonian telescope. What that means is, now, I'll show you real quick, right here at the end of the telescope, there's no glass, right? There's a center thing in the middle held up by some pieces of metal. That's called the spider assembly or the secondary assembly. There's a little mirror in there that sits at a 45 degree angle. What happens is the light comes in the telescope, comes down to the bottom of the mirror where there's a curved mirror, and that light starts reflecting the light to a central point. But before it comes to focus, it bounces off this flat mirror in here and comes out of the focuser, moving a little bit to the right to get it on camera for you. There we go. Is that better? And it comes out, and it comes out of the eyepiece right here. So simple, put the eyepiece in. Annie, readjust the camera, please. 
I can't move so far enough to the right to get this in the camera. So Andy's going to come over here and readjust the camera a little bit so you can see what's going on. So this is known as a Newtonian, a Newtonian telescope. It is 114 millimeters in diameter, which means this diameter is 114 millimeters. The focal length, remember how long everything is, the focal length is 500 millimeters. She's done, Paul. The focal length is 500 millimeters. So this, the longer the focal length, the more magnification it has when you use the same eyepiece. As you can see, it's got a red dot finder, same process. Point the telescope at something, you can see it's a long ways away. And bingo, adjust the red dot finder, and you're good to go using the telescope. Now this telescope is a little bit more complicated to use. Telescope isn't, but the mount is. Instead of simple left, right, up, and down, this is what's called an equatorial mount. It's designed to mimic the rotation of the Earth's axis. This axis right here is set to match the axis of the, of, uh, the rotational axis of the Earth. You would point it at the North Celestial Pole, this axis pointing up at the North Celestial Pole, or if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, up at the South Celestial Pole, not the magnetic pole, but the true North or true South Pole. And then, if you rotate the telescope around this axis right here, it's always going to look at the same spot in the sky right now because we're just looking at north, right, at Polaris. And you can rotate this all the way around. You're going to see the same thing. But what happens is when you want to look at something, say, in the southwestern sky, you can move the telescope like this and use the red dot finder to find something. And now you can look through the telescope in the southwestern sky. And here's the beautiful part. If you've done a good job of getting this axis lined up, you can simply use the slow motion control arm and you can turn this really slowly and follow your object across the sky. So as this is turning, you can follow it and you see it's turning, right? It's turning on this axis. Well, if you're off a little bit and it starts drifting out because this axis is not right exact, you can Somebody is taken off. There it is. You can turn the declination right here and keep it going across the sky, right? Real simple to use, use these two slow motion control knob, knobs, arms, to keep the object centered up in your sky. What happens is when you watch stars and planets move across the sky, they move in nice, smooth, curved arcs. Whether they're in the northern hemisphere, looking north or looking south, they move in nice, smooth arcs. This telescope is designed to follow those nice, smooth arcs to make it really easy to keep your object centered in the sky. More skills to learn, just like if you want to play, say, a guitar, you got to learn more skills to play guitar better. You got to practice at it. Uh, it's, you know, I can play chopsticks on a piano right now, but if I wanted to pay, play something else, I would have to practice that and get better at it. That's the same thing. I can uh, learn to use an equatorial mount uh, really easily with just going out and practicing. It takes a bit of work, but once you master it, it's a great tool to make your astronomy uh, a jump up in the game. The key to it is getting this axis right here aligned with true north. So our time today has come to an end. I appreciate everybody who's watched and uh, given us a shout out. Thank you very much. If you're just joining us here on Amazon Live, uh, click that follow button if you like what you're seeing so we can bring you more content in the future. Talk about telescopes, binoculars, uh, bird watching, astrophotography on Fridays, uh, fun toys, learning through, edu through, through play uh, with lots of our educational toys on uh, Tuesday and a science-related show, microscopes, things like that on Mondays as well. Always at 3 o'clock, thereabouts, here on Amazon Live. So for Paul, who is over at his house in the remote control room. Uh, yeah, or the remote it is a remote, control room. It's a room. remote control, remote control room. Uh, we appreciate Correct. him figuring out ways to make this uh, work while he's at home. Paul, Paul Newton, uh, Noah Menard over hey, in the control room. Hey, don't touch room. the camera. Hey, hey, don't touch the camera. You're making the camera move. Paul, Noah says... Who's touching the camera? Annie was touching the camera. She was... Don't touch the camera. She's, She's doing it now to mess with you. Now she's doing it on purpose. 
and for Annie is over there torturing Paul as we speak, and maybe y'all, because y'all can see the camera shake, shake too. I'm That's Keith right. Martz for Explore Scientific. We'll see you tomorrow on Thursday when we'll be talking about uh, On the Wing. We'll be doing a bird watching show. And I have a, added a couple of birds uh, to my life list. We'll be talking about those tomorrow as well. Uh, look forward to talking to you. Thanks for joining us. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, wherever you are. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.